The film Apicula was a way to search the distance at which it would retain its enigma, um, search for a position that is trying to refrain explaining how they live, raise questions in instead of trying to answer them. Serge Danet used to say that cinema teaches me to tirelessly touch with my gaze the distance at which the other one begins. All the films I make are tools to actually reassess this idea of the distance to the other. That probably comes from my studies in anthropology, but also because I grew up in different countries. So I needed to understand what made me different from others or what made the others different from me. Chaque mouvement de terrain, chaque col, défilé, ombre d'un rocher, gai et sentier, était vu comme un abri potentiel. Ariana was uh, shot in um, Afghanistan in the beginning of 2001. And all these films that I've made ever since are kind of a way to question conventions of representation. So what kind of uh, convention do we usually use to depict these kinds of subjects? And how could we challenge them? So Ariana is really um, about the military gaze. Uh, it questions um, a certain kind of camera movement, which is a panorama. So what kind of political implication it has. The second film, The Last Tour, is about the tourist gaze. Traveling Amazonia is about what had made the gaze possible. Um, it's all whirling around the idea of map making, how we have sort of conceived maps and conceived space at the beginning of the 16th century, but also talks about um, you know, the Trans-Amazonia as a big social project in Brazil at the time. Territory 1, 2, and 3 was shot in Hamalah and Palestine and also in um, Israel. And it, it's a, the question is, how could architecture become a military optical device? How landscape is therefore seen as something completely cons constructed? The Secretary of the Invisible, which was shot on the river Niger, in, in Niger was a homage to Jean Rouche. Um, and the idea was to explore the imaginary realities, uh, what they are, and how cinema could be a tool to reveal the invisible. The Crystal Palace was about the gaze of the viewer inside a museum. And Apicula, finally, is about the naturalist gaze. They sort of always question the point of view of the observer, but not only his point of view, but the observer himself. In fact, what I'm trying to do is to give through these films by challenging these con conventions of representation, but also trying to give a definition of what the artist is. So each of the films is, is um, raise a problem of representation, and I'm trying to resolve it or think about it. So there are really like traveling accounts, because in fact they've been you know shot in lots of different places, um, and the cameras follows my path, follow my process, my thought process as I'm going through that landscape and raising questions about what I'm doing. Um, they all kind of follow that, that way of approaching a reality and questioning it. The reason why I wanted to make an uh, animal documentary, I always wanted to make an animal documentary, and I'll probably make more, is because Ever since the, the division between nature and culture, which is the point of departure of modernity, the distance between us and animals is probably the furthest one. Choosing bees was, um, of course, because of uh, Maurice Maeterlinck's book. What fascinated me about this book is how he turned anthropology into literature. How, how was that possible? So, but also because bees were, were raising you know, problems of representation because the limit of visibility of what you could see of bees' movement made us on set raise a lot of questions that were quite interesting. First, you have to use microphotography and also you have to increase the frame rate so that, you know, usually convention of documentaries, animal documentaries make, you would use 50, 70, 200 or 300 frames per second. So at 300 frames per second, you would see the flap of the wings of a bee. You would see what your eyes can't see. Mm -hmm. So on set with the director of photography, you know, we decided to um, 
search for a way that the bees would be perceived but not entirely seen so that we didn't have to use these conventions. So we decided to stay with 36 frames per second. It also raised the numbers of other questions, which were how big should the bee be on the image? So how close should we bring the eye of the viewer close to the animal? So we decided that the distance between the camera and the bees should be 1 meter 20, and we recorded these moments where we're actually measuring the distance between us and the bees. So we were trying to search the distance at which it would retain that, that enigma, retain that mystery. So we, we didn't sort of make the viewer be in a position that he would not be normally in reality. We would not be intrusive inside the intimacy of bees. We would just represent that point of view of a, of a flaneur who just looks at things. The film opens and you hear that voiceover that says, nature doesn't tell stories. Um, so it, it sets the film immediately against convention of representation. Um, because that's usually what we do. We anthropomorphize nature, no? we, we, we build emotions, human emotions that we could sort of recognize in animals, rationalize these animals and explain their behavior with a kind of scientific point of view, and want to use all these tools to get as close as you can and make you see these animals in a way that you actually would never be able to see them in reality. So the film was more about filming the crew in presence of the bees, um, and we had to be extremely responsive to their movement because we didn't manipulate them. It's a record of that experience, it's a record of this approach, no? Um, and it films uh, in a kind of very poetic, atmospheric way the situation of this crew looking at um, the bees. It's a very precious film to me because it's going to open another series of animal documentaries and also because although I have all this kind of discursive information you know that sort of rounds around the film I think the film is very poetic and goes way beyond whatever I could say about it.